Argos, Greek, Argos Aros, ancient Greek, Argos Oros, is a city in Argolis, the Peloponnese, Greece, and is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. It is the largest city in Argolis and a major center for the area. Since the 2011 local government reform, it has been part of the municipality of Argos Mykines, of which it is a municipal unit. The municipal unit has an area of 138.138 square kilometers. It is 11 kilometers, 7 miles from Nafplion, which was its historic harbor. A settlement of great antiquity, Argos has been continuously inhabited as at least a substantial village for the past 7000 years. The city is a member of the most ancient European towns network. A resident of the city of Argos is known as an Argive, Argiver, Jive, Greek. However, this term is also used to refer to those ancient Greeks generally who assaulted the city of Troy during the Trojan War. The term is more widely applied by the Homeric bards. Numerous ancient monuments can be found in the city today. Agriculture is the mainstay of the local economy. Topic: Geography. Topic: Climate. Topic: Etymology. The name of the city is very ancient and several etymological theories have been proposed as an explanation to its meaning. The most popular one maintains that the name of the city is a remainder from the Peliskian language, i.e. the one used by the people who first settled in the area, in which Argos meant, plain. Alternatively, the name is associated with Argos, the third king of the city in ancient times, who renamed it after himself, thus replacing its older name Pharonikon Astu, Pharonikon city of Pharonius. It is also believed that Argos is linked to the word Argos, Argos, which meant white. Possibly, this had to do with the visual impression given of the Argolic plain during harvest time. According to Strabo, the name could have even originated from the word agros field", by antimetathesis of the consonants. <laughs> History Antiquity Argos is traditionally considered to be the origins of the ancient Macedonian royal Greek house of the Argid dynasty Greek, Argedi, Argedi. The most celebrated members were Philip II of Macedon and Alexander the Great. As a strategic location on the fertile plain of Argolis, Argos was a major stronghold during the Mycenaean era. In classical times Argos was a powerful rival of Sparta for dominance over the Peloponnese, but was eventually shunned by other Greek city-states after remaining neutral during the Greco-Persian Wars. There is evidence of continuous settlement in the area starting with a village about 7,000 years ago in the late Neolithic, located on the foot of Aspida Hill. Since that time, Argos has been continually inhabited at the same geographical location. Its creation is attributed to Pharonius, with its first name having been Pharonikon Asti, or the city of Pharonius. The historical presence of the Peliskian Greeks in the area can be witnessed in the linguistic remainders that survive up to today, such as the very name of the city and Larissa the name of the city's castle located on the hill of the name. The city is located at a rather propitious area, among Nemea, Corinth and Arcadia. It also benefited from its proximity to Lake Lerner, which, at the time, was at a distance of one kilometre from the south end of Argos. 
Argos was a major stronghold of Mycenaean times, and along with the neighboring Acropolis of Mycenae and Tiryns became a very early settlement because of its commanding positions in the midst of the fertile plain of Argolis. <laughs> Archaic Argos Argos experienced its greatest period of expansion and power under the energetic 7th century BC ruler King Phidon. Under Phidon, Argos regained sway over the cities of the Argolid and challenged Sparta's dominance of the Peloponnese. Spartan dominance is thought to have been interrupted following the Battle of Hisiae in 669–668 BC, in which Argive troops defeated the Spartans in a hoplite battle. During the time of its greatest power, the city boasted a pottery and bronze sculpturing school, pottery workshops, tanneries and clothes producers. Moreover, at least 25 celebrations took place in the city, in addition to a regular local products exhibition. A sanctuary dedicated to Hera was also found at the same spot where the monastery of Panagia Katekrimeni is located today. Phidon also extended Argive influence throughout Greece, taking control of the Olympic Games away from the citizens of Elis and appointing himself organizer during his reign. Phidon is also thought to have introduced reforms for standard weight and measures in Argos, a theory further reinforced with the unearthing of six «spits» of iron in an Argive herion, possibly remainders of a dedication from Phidon. Classical <laughs> Argos <laughs> 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 In 494 BC, Argos suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of its regional rival, Sparta, at the Battle of Sepia. Following this defeat, Herodotus tells us the city suffered a form of stasis. The political chaos is thought to have resulted in a democratic transition in the city. Argos did not participate in the Hellenic alliance against the Persian invasion of 480 BC. This resulted in a period of diplomatic isolation, although there is evidence of an Argive alliance with Tegea prior to 462 BC. In 462 BC, Argos joined a tripartite alliance with Athens and Thessaly. This alliance was somewhat dysfunctional, however, and the Argives are only thought to have provided marginal contributions to the alliance at the Battle of Eno and Tanagra. For example, only 1,000 Argive hoplites are thought to have fought alongside the Athenians at the Battle of Tanagra. Following the Allies' defeat at Tanagra in 457 BC, the alliance began to fall apart, resulting in its dissolution in 451 BC. Argos remained neutral or the ineffective ally of Athens during the Archidamian War between Sparta and Athens. Argos neutrality resulted in a rise of its prestige among other Greek cities, and Argos used this political capital to organize and lead an alliance against Sparta and Athens in 421 BC. This alliance included Mantinea, Corinth, Elis, Thebes, Argos, and eventually Athens. This alliance fell apart, however, after the Allied loss at the Battle of Tegea in 418 BC. This defeat, combined with the raiding of the Argolid by the Epidaurians, resulted in political instability and an eventual oligarchic coup in 417 BC. Although democracy was restored within a year, Argos was left permanently weakened by this coup. This weakening led to a loss of power, which in turn led to the shift of commercial focus from the ancient Agora to the eastern side of the city, delimited by Danau and Agiu Konstathinu streets. Argos played a minor role in the Corinthian Wars against Sparta, and for a short period of time considered uniting with Corinth to form an expanded Argolid state. For a brief period of time, the two polis combined, but Corinth quickly rebelled against Argive domination, and Argos returned to its traditional boundaries. After this, Argos continued to remain a minor power in Greek affairs.
Topic: <laughs> Democracy in Classical Argos. Argos was a democracy for most of the Classical period, with only a brief hiatus between 418 and 416. Democracy was first established after a disastrous defeat by the Spartans at the Battle of Sepea in 494. So many Argives were killed in the battle that a revolution ensued, in which previously disenfranchised outsiders were included in the state for the first time. Argive democracy included an assembly called the Alaria, a council, the Bola, and another body called the Aeti, whose precise responsibilities are obscure. Magistrates served six month terms of office, with few exceptions, and were audited at the end of their terms. There is some evidence that ostracism was practiced. Topic: <inaudible> Roman, Byzantine, Crusader, Ottoman rule and independence. Under Roman rule, Argos was part of the province of Achaea. Under Byzantine rule, it was part of the theme of Hellas and later of the theme of the Peloponnese. In the aftermath of the Fourth Crusade, the Crusaders captured the castle built on Larissa Hill, the site of the ancient Acropolis, and the area became part of the lordship of Argos and Nauplia. In 1388 it was sold to the Republic of Venice, but was taken by the despot of the Moria Theodore I Paleologos before the Venetians could take control of the city, he sold it anyway to them in 1394. The Crusaders established a Latin bishopric. Venetian rule lasted until 1463, when the Ottomans captured the city. In 1397, the Ottomans plundered Argos, carrying off much of the population, to sell as slaves. The Venetians repopulated the town and region with Albanian settlers, granting them long-term agrarian tax exemptions. Together with the Greeks of Argos, they supplied Stratioti troops to the armies of Venice. Some historians consider the French military term, Argale, to derive from the Greek, Argates, or inhabitant of Argos, as a large number of French Stratioti came from the plain of Argos. During Ottoman rule, Argos was divided in four mahalas, or quarters, the Greek rum mahala, Lipur mahala, Bekir Efenti mahala and Karamautsa or Beshikla mahala, respectively corresponding to what is now the northeastern, the northwestern, the southwestern and southeastern parts of the city. The Greek mahala was also called the "...quarter of the unfaithful of Argos town." In Turkish documents, whereas Lipur Mahala, the quarter of the rabbits, was composed mostly of Albanian emigrants and well-reputed families, Karamautsa Mahala was home to the most prominent Turks and boasted a mosque, modern-day church of Ayas Konstadinos, a Turkish cemetery, Ali Nakan Bay's Sarail, Turkish baths, and a Turkish school. It is also at this period when the open market of the city is first organized on the site north to Cappadistrius's barracks, at the same spot where it is held in modern times. A mosque would have existed there, too, according to the city planning most Ottoman cities followed. Argos grew exponentially during this time, with its sprawl being unregulated and without planning. As French explorer Pocaville noted, its houses are not aligned, without order, scattered all over the place, divided by home gardens and uncultivated areas." Lipo Mahala appears to have been the most organized, having the best layout, while Bekir Mahala and Karamautsa Mahala were the most labyrinthine. However, all quarters shared the same type of streets. Firstly, they all had main streets which were wide, busy, and public roads meant to allow for communication between neighborhoods. Typical examples are, to a great extent, modern day Corinthu, Nafplu, and Tripolios streets. Secondary streets were also common in all four quarters since they lead to the interior of each mahala, having a semi-public character, whereas the third type of streets referred to dead-end private alleys used specifically by families to access their homes. 
Remnants of this city layout can be witnessed even today, as Argos still preserves several elements of this Ottoman-type style, particularly with its long and complicated streets, its narrow alleys and its densely constructed houses. With the exception of a period of Venetian domination in 1687–1715, Argos remained in Ottoman hands until the beginning of the Greek War of Independence in 1821, when wealthy Ottoman families moved to nearby Nafplio due to its stronger walling. At that time, as part of the general uprising, many local governing bodies were formed in different parts of the country, and the Consulate of Argos was proclaimed on the 28th of March 1821 under the Peloponnesian Senate. It had a single head of state, Stamatelos Antonopoulos, styled consul, between the 28th of March and the 26th of May 1821. Later, Argos accepted the authority of the unified provisional government of the First National Assembly at Epidaurus, and eventually became part of the Kingdom of Greece. With the coming of Governor Ioannis Kapodistrias, the city underwent efforts of modernization. Being an agricultural village, the need for urban planning was vital. For this reason, in 1828, Kapodistrias himself appointed mechanic Stamatis Vulgaris as the creator of a city plan which would offer Argos big streets, squares and public spaces. However, both Vulgaris and, later, French architect de Borichun's plans were not well received by the locals, with the result that the former had to be revised by Zavos. Ultimately, none of the plans were fully implemented. Still, the structural characteristics of de Borichun's plan can be found in the city today, despite obvious proof of pre-revolutionary layout, such as the unorganized urban sprawl testified in the area from Anaku Street to the point where the railway tracks can be found today. After talks concerning the intentions of the Greek government to move the Greek capital from Nafplio to Athens, discussions regarding the possibility of Argos also being a candidate as the potential new capital became more frequent, with supporters of the idea claiming that, unlike Athens, Argos was naturally protected by its position and benefited from a nearby port Nafplio. Moreover, it was maintained that construction of public buildings would be difficult in Athens, given that most of the land was owned by the Greek church, meaning that a great deal of expropriation would have to take place. On the contrary, Argos did not face a similar problem, having large available areas for this purpose. In the end, the proposition of the Greek capital being moved to Argos was rejected by the father of King Otto, Ludwig, who insisted in making Athens the capital, something which eventually happened in 1834. Mythology <inaudible> 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 The mythological kings of Argos are in order, Anacus, Pheronius, Apis, Argus, Chryasus, Forbes, Triopas, Yassus, Agenor, Crotopus, Stenilus, Gelinor aka Peliscus, Danaeus, Lincius, Abas, Proetus, Acrisius, Perseus, Megapenthus, Argius and Anaxagoras. An alternative version supplied by Tatian of the original 17 consecutive kings of Argos includes Apis, Argios, Creasos, and Forbes between Argus and Triopas, explaining the apparent unrelation of Triopas to Argus. The city of Argos was believed to be the birthplace of the mythological character Perseus, the son of the god Zeus and Danae, who was the daughter of the king of Argos, Acrisius. After the original seventeen kings of Argos, there were three kings ruling Argos at the same time see Anaxagoras, one descended from Bias, one from Melampus, and one from Anaxagoras. Melampus was succeeded by his son Mantius, then Oacles, and Amphiaraus, and his house of Melampus lasted down to the brothers Alcmaeon and Amphilochus. Anaxagoras was succeeded by his son Elector, and then Iphus. Iphus left his kingdom to his nephew Stenilus, the son of his brother Caponius. 
Bias was succeeded by his son Talaus, and then by his son Adrastus who, with Amphiaraus, commanded the disastrous Seven against Thebes. Adrastus bequeathed the kingdom to his son, Aegilius, who was subsequently killed in the War of the Epigoni. Diomedes, grandson of Adrastus through his son-in-law Tydeus and daughter Dipel, replaced Aegilius and was king of Argos during the Trojan War. This house lasted longer than those of Anaxagoras and Melampus, and eventually the kingdom was reunited under its last member, Cyanippus, son of Aegilius, soon after the exile of Diomedes. Ecclesiastical history After Christianity became established in Argos, the first bishop documented in extant written records is Genethlius, who in 448 AD took part in the synod called by Archbishop Flavian of Constantinople that deposed Eutyches from his priestly office and excommunicated him. The next bishop of Argos, Onesimus, was at the 451 Council of Chalcedon. His successor, Thales, was a signatory of the letter that the bishops of the Roman province of Hellas sent in 458 to Byzantine Emperor Leo I the Thracian to protest about the killing of Proterius of Alexandria. Bishop Ioannes was at the Third Council of Constantinople in 680, and Theotimus at the Photian Council of Constantinople 879. The local see is today the Greek Orthodox metropolis of Argolis. Under Frankish Crusader rule, Argos became a Latin church bishopric in 1212, which lasted as a residential see until Argos was taken by the Ottoman Empire in 1463 but would be revived under the Second Venetian Rule in 1686. Today the diocese is a Catholic titular see. Characteristics Orientation The city of Argos is delimited to the north by dry river Zerias, to the east by Anachos River and Panitsa Stream which emanates from the latter, to the west by the Larissa Hill site of Homonymous Castle and of a monastery called Panagia Catechecrimeni Porticalusa and the Aspidos Hill unofficially Prophetes Elias Hill, and to the south by the Notios Periferiakos Road. The Ius Petros Saint Peter Square, along with the eponymous cathedral dedicated to Saint Peter the Wonderworker, make up the town centre, whereas some other characteristic town squares are the Lycia Agora Open Market Square, officially Democratius Republic Square, where, as implied by its name, an open market takes place twice a week, Staragora Wheat Market, officially Dervanarchia Square, and Dicasterion Court Square. Bonus Park is an essential green space of the city. Currently, the most commercially active streets of the city are those surrounding the Ius Petros Square Kapodistriou, Danau, Vasileos Constantinou streets as well as Corinthou Street. The Pesodromi pedestrian streets, i.e. the paved Michael Stamu, Soldari and Venizelu streets, are the most popular meeting point, encompassing a wide variety of shops and cafeterias. <laughs> Population In 700 BC there were at least 5,000 people living in the city. In the 4th century BC, the city was home to as many as 30,000 people. Today, according to the 2011 Greek census, the city has a population of 22,209. It is the largest city in Argolis, larger than the capital Nafplio. Economy <inaudible> <inaudible> The primary economic activity in the area is agriculture. Citrus fruits are the predominant crop, followed by olives and apricots. 
The area is also famous for its local melon variety, Argos melons or Argotico. There is also important local production of dairy products, factories for fruits processing. Considerable remains of the ancient and medieval city survive and are a popular tourist attraction. Monuments Most of Argos' historical and archaeological monuments are currently unused, abandoned, or only partially renovated. The Larissa Castle, built during prehistoric time, which has undergone several repairs and expansions since antiquity and played a significant historical role during the Venetian domination of Greece and the Greek War of Independence. It is located on top of the homonymous Larissa Hill, which also constitutes the highest spot of the city 289 meters. In ancient times, a castle was also found in neighboring Aspida Hill. When connected with walls, these two castles fortified the city from enemy invasions. The ancient theatre, built in the 3rd century BC with a capacity of 20,000 spectators, replaced an older neighbouring theatre of the 5th century BC and communicated with the ancient Agora. It was visible from any part of the ancient city and the Argolic Gulf. In 1829, it was used by Ioannis Kapodistrias for the Fourth National Assembly of the New Hellenic State. Today, cultural events are held at its premises during the summer months. The ancient Agora, adjacent to the ancient theater, which developed in the 6th century BC, was located at the junction of the ancient roads coming from Corinth, Herion and Tegea. Excavations in the area have uncovered a Bouleuterian, built in 460 BC when Argos adopted the democratic regime, a sanctuary of Apollo Lysias and Apalistra. The «Criterion» of Argos, an ancient monument located on the southwest side of the town, on the foot of Larissa Hill, which came to have its current structure during the 6th–3rd century BC period. Initially, it served as a court of ancient Argos, similar to Areopagus of Athens. According to mythology, it was at this area where Hypomnestra, one of the fifty daughters of Danaeus, the first king of Argos, was tried. Later, under the reigns of Hadrian, a fountain was created to collect and circulate water coming from the Hadrianine aqueduct located in northern Argos. The site is connected via a paved path with the ancient theatre. The Barracks of Cappadostrias, a preservable building with a long history. Built in the 1690s during the Venetian domination of Greece, they initially served as a hospital run by the Sisters of Mercy. During the Torcocratia, they served as a market and a post office. Later, in 1829, significant damage caused during the Greek Revolution was repaired by Cappadistrias who turned the building into a cavalry barrack, a school 1893 an exhibition space 1899, a shelter for Greek refugees displaced during the population exchange between Greece and Turkey since 1920, and an interrogation and torture space during the German occupation of Greece. In 1955–68, it was used by the army for the last time, it now accommodates the Byzantine Museum of Argos, local corporations and also serves as an exhibition space. The Municipal Neoclassical Market Building, unofficially the Khmer's i.e. arches, from the arches that it boasts, built in 1889, which is located next to Democratius Square, is one of the finest samples of modern Argos masterly architecture, in Ernst Ziller style. The elongated, two-corridor, preservable building accommodates small shops. The Cappadistrian School, in central Argos Built by architect Labros Zavos in 1830, as part of Cappadistrius's efforts to provide places of education to the Greek people, it could accommodate up to 300 students. However, technical difficulties led to its decay, until it was restored several times, the last of which being in 1932. 
Today, its neoclassical character is evident, with the building housing the first elementary school of the town. The old town hall, built during the time of Capodistrias in 1830, which originally served as a justice of the peace, the Dimagerenshire of Argos, an arm of carabineers and a prison. From 1987 to 2012, it housed the town hall which is now located in Capodistriu Street. The House of Fulhelene Thomas Gordon, built in 1829 that served as an all-girls school, a dance school and was home to the 4th Greek Artillery Regiment. Today it accommodates the French Institute of Athens Institut Français d Athens. The House of Spyridon Tricoupis, built in 1900, where the politician was born and spent his childhood. Also located in the estate, which is not open to public, is the St. Carolambos Chapel where Tricoupus was baptized. The House of General Socrates, important military fighter in the Greek Revolution of 1821 and later Assemblyman of Argos. The Temple of Ias Constadinos, one of the very few remaining buildings in Argos dating from the Ottoman Greece era. It is estimated to have been built in the 1570–1600 period, with a minaret also having existed in its premises. It served as a mosque and an Ottoman cemetery up to 1871, when it was declared a Christian temple. The chambered tombs of the Aspidos Hill. The Hellenicon Pyramid Dating back to late 4th BC, there exist many theories as to the purpose it served tumulus, fortress. Together with the widely accepted scientific chronology, there are some people who claim it was built shortly after the Pharaoh tomb, i.e. the Great Pyramid of Giza, thus a symbol of the excellent relationship the citizens of Argos had with Egypt. A great number of archaeological findings, dating from the prehistoric ages, can be found at the Argos Museum, housed at the old building of Dimitrios Kalagis at St. Peter's Square. The Argos Airport, located in an homonymous area Aerodromeo in the outskirts of the city is also worth mentioning. The area it covers was created in 1916–1917 and was greatly used during the Greco-Italian War and for the training of new Caberos school aviators for the Hellenic Air Force Academy. It also constituted an important benchmark in the organization of the Greek Air Forces in southern Greece. Furthermore, the airport was used by the Germans for the release of their aerial troops during the Battle of Crete. It was last used as a landing, take-off point for spray planes for agricultural purposes in the olive tree cultivations up until 1985. Transportation Argos is connected via regular bus services with neighboring areas as well as Athens. In addition, taxi stands can be found at the Ias Petros as well as the Lyki Agora Square. The city also has a railway station which, at the moment, remains closed due to an indefinite halt to all railway services in the Peloponnese area by the Hellenic Railways Organization. However, in late 2014, it was announced that the station would open up again, as part of an expansion of the Athens Suburban Railway in Argos, Nafplio and Corinthos. Education <inaudible> 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 Argos has a wide range of educational institutes that also serve neighboring sparsely populated areas and villages. In particular, the city has seven demotica primary schools, four gymnasia junior high, three lyceums senior high, one vocational school, one music school as well as a touristical business and cooking department and a postgraduate ASPETE department. The city also has two public libraries. Sports 
Argos hosts two sport clubs with presence in higher national divisions and several achievements, Panagiarkos FC Football Club, founded in 1926 and AC Diomedes Argus Handball Club founded in 1976. Diomedes Argos is the unique provincial Greek sport club with European Cup. Notable people Acrisius, mythological king Theoclymenus, mythological prophet Agamemnon, legendary leader of the Achaeans in the Trojan War Acusilaus, 6th century BC, logographer and mythographer Agelaidus, 6th-5th century BC, sculptor Calchas, 8th century BC, Homeric mythological seer. Caranos, 8th century BC, founder of the Macedonian Argid dynasty. Leo Skouros, 13th century, Byzantine despot. Nikon the Metanuati, 10th century, Christian saint of Armenian origin, according to some sources born in Argos. Phidon, 7th century BC, king of Argos. Argus, 7th century BC, king of Argos. Polycletos, 5th-4th century BC, sculptor. Polycletos the Younger, 4th century BC, sculptor. Telesilla, 6th century BC, Greek poet. Belistes, hetera and lover of Pharaoh Ptolemy II Philadelphus. Eleni Bakopanos, born 1954, Canadian politician. Samuel Green Wheeler Benjamin, 1837 to 1914, American statesman. Topic: International relations. Topic twin towns and sister cities Argos is twinned with, Veria, Greece Abbeville, France Episcopi, Cyprus MTSK Heta, Georgia Other relations Most ancient European towns network See also Kings of Argos Communities of Argos Argos dog List of settlements in Argolis Topic Notes Topic Sources and external links Official website G Catholic with incumbent bio links The Theatre at Argos, the Ancient Theatre Archive, Theatre Specifications and Virtual Reality Tour of Theatre